Hey everybody, welcome to Bueller and Goad. I am John Bueller. And I am Dwayne Goad, and tonight's movie is a cult classic from 1979. It's called Over the Edge. Me and Dwayne are stand-up comics, but we haven't been able to work during the pandemic, so we decided to have some fun with movies that we think are special. And Over the Edge is one of those very, very special movies. It's got gunplay, it's got violence, it's got necking on the couch, it's got gene cutoffs. In the 70s, you, sometimes you need shorts and you go, oh, I only have jeans, but then you go, oh, wait, I have scissors. <laughs> And John and I have a special connection to this film because as youngsters, it scared us so badly that we never wanted to get into trouble. We were pussies. I still am. The story of this movie is actually based on true events that occurred in a planned community in the early 70s uh, when the kids had nothing to do. So they thought, hey, uh, let's try vandalism. All right, so let's get into it. Over the edge. This is where we meet Matt Dillon, right? Yes, at a skeevy rec center where he's talking to a young gal who is clearly wearing his shirt. Somehow there was some wardrobe mix up because those shirts should be on each other. <laughs> they did not have a big wardrobe budget on uh, Over the Edge. Hey kids, want to be in a movie? You can wear your own clothes. It starts with a kid shooting out a cop's windshield from an overpass. And this badass is wearing a Daniel Boone hat and Daisy Dukes. He looks like a Russian hooker. And Richie takes the rap for this with our hero, Carl. All right, let's go. Who sucks. I, 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 don't want to, I don't like this kid. I've got to drive, we need to be left alone, okay? The producers didn't want to use actual established kid actors for most of the parts because they were afraid that they weren't edgy. So it's like, that's not weird, eh? Let's like trolling around look, looking for the, the edgy kids. Where do you keep your dirty boys? The angry ones, the mean ones, you know, the ones with jean shorts. You're shooting a movie about teens? Well, count me in. This kid sucks. We're gonna use them? Great. You're Carl. <laughs> Incorrigible. So Richie and Carl get caught by get Doberman, up to who was 39 at the time of filming. Let me see. Stay hydrated. In the 70s, if you wanted to drink something, you either had cola or 10W30. You're like, eh, eh, I want a drink. They're like, do you want a funnel with that? <laughs> Please, everybody, drink water. Don't be like Dwayne. Best supporting actor goes to Dwayne's big can of Rainier. My hand's covering the whole thing. Rainier beer. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> this is why I don't do commercials. Get in there, Carl. Let's we didn't go. do nothing, man. Carl and Richie get hauled off to the police station to get interrogated. If you got enough cards on, you'd play solitaire. This movie scared me straight before there was a scared straight. Dwayne straight, everybody. Sup? Sup? I only got one law. A kid who tells on another kid is a dead kid. I was such a pussy. I didn't want to get in trouble ever. Oh, me neither. I didn't want to get shipped off to Juvie, which I think they call the hill in this movie. You know, where all the teens smoke. I wouldn't even have the nuts to wear a pot leaf belt buckle. It's leaf. Carl, of course, has a Boston belt buckle, so nobody talks to him because everybody hates corporate rock. So the cops call. Oh, that's fun to say. So the cops call Carl. Call Carl. Now, if you, if you could nail that, you would have been in this movie. I gotta do my exercise. <laughs> Warm ups. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. I my baby buggy bumpers. Yes, what did he do? <laughs> so they call Carl's father, who works at the sweatiest Cadillac dealership in the West. Oh, where does Carl's dad work? Carl's dad caverns? <laughs> this is, of course, when we find out that Carl's dad is the town bullshitter. Thank you. Because he immediately throws his wife under the bus just so we can get out of work. You know, I've told my wife a thousand times, putting him in a glove compartment is not the same thing as paying them, right? And we meet Jerry Cole. He's a, he's a guy who just hangs around the movie. <laughs> They're gonna have to bury me in that old heap of mine. You sure take care of that car, Jerry, I'll tell you. Well, Jerry, it's been nice foreshadowing with you. <laughs> 
and Richie's mom takes him back to what I guess is the Italian ghetto part of New Granada. <laughs> Your grandmother, she making the sauce. <laughs> Smart nap. Where are you taking the family belt buckle? Oh, give it to me. You get it dirty. Don't get the, don't get the belt buckle dirty. <laughs> What, was that too too much? Yeah, thanks. We might cut you out. Thanks anyway. You said cut. Oh, that was the Italian Anti-Defamation League, I think. <laughs> While Richie goes to the ghetto, Carl's dad drives him home. He didn't do anything. God. To a nice house uh, where his super nice mother is waiting there to be super understanding to him. You were too hard on Carl, were you, dear? <clears throat> Carl's got nothing to worry about. He's a spoiled little prick. Oh, that's about noon then here for drinks? <laughs> My dad was more like the bald cop. You look like jerks. Shut up. But he can always escape to the soothing sounds of Cheap Trick. Mommy's alright. Daddy's alright. I don't know the lyrics yet. This is where we see where these little fuckers go to class. Okay, cool it. When I was in elementary school, this is what I thought high school is going to be like. Going into this class from hell where the girl's drawing belt buckles on the chalkboard. That kid's stabbing his desk. Bout. You don't know if he's stabbing his desk, he might have just been doing a scantron or something. B, C, D. I don't know this one. Come back to it. Cheap <laughs> <laughs> <Deep> trick. <laughs> that stuff I took. It's supposed to be speed, but I think it was acid. I'll flash it. What better way to get an education than by taking mind-expanding hallucinogens? <laughs> what do you say, gang? I'm looking for edgy kids, okay? Have you ever even taken acid? I've taken jazz and tap. Linda, bring some acid in here. So the principal calls an assembly to broach the problem of vandalism. Why are you late, Richard? Um, I had to take a piss. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so at this assembly, they show the kids a film strip about vandalism and its evils. And these kids, I think, are just getting more ideas from this. For them, it's a training film. I didn't know you could tear the pages out of books. I thought books were just for stabbing. I just think it's childish. Janine from Ghostbusters shows up. Maybe you're mad at the school, but busting something doesn't help. Busting makes me feel good. We got one! <laughs> <laughs> you know, they should take advantage of the situation and make vandalism a school sport. <laughs> Carl, have you thought about what school you'd like to fuck up in the fall? Are those guys from Texas coming to buy the land across from the wreck? And this is when you find out that land developers from Texas are on their way to New Granada to, fingers crossed, buy up all the land across from the rec center to build an industrial complex so the kids have less to do and more time on the streets. I thought they were building a drive-in and a bowling alley there, Dad. Yeah, I thought they built a drive. I thought they built a drive-in bowling alley, Dad. Yeah. It's a <laughs> drive-in and a bowling alley. <laughs> We need more of a reason for people to move here than uh, the bowling alley. You fucking idiots! <laughs> and now it's party night. We're going to see how these kids get down in New Granada. And we know it's party night because Richie is changing into his more formal black mesh half shirt. You might not even know us. Shut up. While Carl has opted for a look from the Jay Leno collection, a little denim on denim, a Canadian tuxedo, if you will, in 1979. Hey, John, is that a cheap trick tape in your pocket? Hey, Claude. How's it going? Pretty good. Just getting mellow, man. So we meet Tip. And Tip is the drug kingpin of New Granada. Don't be fooled by the fact that he looks like an 11-year-old chick. 12 bucks a gram. And now we're off to party night in Old Town. Party? Come on. This was so anxiety-inducing for me. When this kid bites the can, that was what I was like, oh, I never want to go to parties. And I never was invited to one. Well, John, that's because we're both from Canada 
and our beer cans were made of tin back in the 70s, where in America it was aluminum. Aluminum? Al aluminum. And he sees, making out on the couch, is his crush and the guy who shot the cop's windshield with a BB gun. So, big surprise, Carl ruins it for Mark. He makes him get up to take a puff of his joint. And cock blocks him with his child actor creepiness. You could do a lot better. You get a good look, cuck? If I ever found out you mentioned my name to a cop, you'd be eating lunch to it too. There's only one rule in New Granada. A kid who cock blocks another kid is a dead kid. On his way home, Carl walks into the most savage beating ever committed to celluloid. Holy shit. You just remember to keep your mouth shut, faggot. So after getting his ass kicked for cock blocking, Carl goes home. What does he do? Cock blocks his parents, who are apparently having a swingers party with Jerry Cole. Jerry's like, hey Carl, throw your keys in the bowl, man. Come on. So Carl cock blocks them too. And that's when Carl looked at his mom and said, you know, mom, you could do a lot better. So Carl's mom is now upstairs trying to find out what happened to Carl. And that's when she realizes he's been robbed of $4. Here's five. If you had all that kind of money, maybe you could have paid those parking tickets, lady. Carl realizes he can make a dollar every time he gets his ass kicked. I'll tell you one thing, Jerry. I sure do appreciate the use of this here buggy. You see, Jerry Cole takes care of that. I've got enough I trouble see. taking care of the, the Cadillac agency, you know. The Cadillac agency, you know. A Cadillac agency. Don't let him improv, he's an actor. They can't be like normal people. It is a little slow right now. We're in uh, in what we refer to as um, hiatus. Hmm? The hiatus. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you just be a human for one second? Hiatus. So now we're back at the rec center where all the kids are teasing Carl about his extreme facial injuries. Oh, I like it, I like it. Who does your face these days? Thank you. But the rec center was supposed to be closed. So Doberman busts Claude and finds his hash. I hope it's hash. <laughs> Don't dig too deep there, Doberman. <laughs> I could search every one of you if I wanted to. Search me. Go on, search me. Come on, search me. Great acting, Chachi. God, he's just a piece of shit. So it takes two of these full-sized cops to drag Claude to the police car, like he's on PCP or something. He might be. The guy has no idea what he's taking half the time. <laughs> and that's when we get a shot of Matt Dillon sitting on top of the police car, where it looks like he's posing for Midriff Monthly. Kind of reminds me of every guy I was afraid of in school and every girl I had a crush on. I don't know, something's happening when I watch that scene. But let's just move on, let's move on. <laughs> Little known fact, the area around rec centers actually has the gravity of Jupiter. Neil deGrasse Tyson told me that. What's going on over there? Oh, looks like the kids are, oh, the kids must be having some kind of a fun over there. It's a fun day. This is a fun day. Yeah. He actually says fun day. It's a fun day. What an asshole. <laughs> so Carl goes home and he sees the Texas land developers. He knows they mean to stop the construction of the roller rink cinema bowling alley drive in. So he wonders, hey, maybe I could cock block this deal. So he stares at them. But that doesn't work. So he decides to rig his father's brand new Cadillac that he's loaning them with firecrackers. And what is probably known as the overreaction of the century. 
And it works. Because, kids, vandalism solves everything. Bueller and Goad Movie Boys Inc. are not responsible for property damage or personal injury resulting from the advice implied or explicit given herein throughout the universe in perpetuity. So the secret's out that this town is full of horrible little hellions, so nobody wants to invest. Seems to me like you all were in such a hopped up hurry to get out of the city that you turn your kids into exactly what you're trying to get away from. Looks like you were running from a thing that did, didn't done come show up where you run done run to. Yeah. Hey, there's your wench, man. Let's go. Now see your driver's license, please. So uh, Carl and Richie come across uh, his crush, Corey, walking with uh, the legend of the Windigo, it looks like. <laughs> Get lost, retard. Well, she just looks so old to be in that movie. She doesn't look like one of the kids. That's what throws me off about her. And she's got a gun. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. It's our gun. Why is guys going to give me a gun back? So they decide to hang out in a construction site. Check this place out. Hey, this is neat. This is Carl's idea of showing a lady a good time. I think I've been treating my dates too well. <laughs> Anybody want to get high? So Carl begins to get clingy. I just mean I like you. That's the chick that normally drives, you know what I mean? Like, come on guys, let's go. Get lost. This is another one of those moments where you feel bad for the actor because the director just tells him to, to improvise. Like, hey, uh, hey, Corey, why don't you do a little dance with a gun? You know how kids dance with a gun. Well, it's a marvelous night for a gun dance. Carl's just looking at her all creepy, like. Carl actually goes, have a Sunday picnic. Have a Sunday picnic. Let's go on a gun date. Sandwiches and guns, weed. Me, Corey, Richie, and Abby, we're going into the field. You want to come? Yeah, there's so much else to do around here. Claude is such a wasteoid. Look what he's watching on TV. It's the Triangle Channel. For me as a kid, it was always Happy Days, Mork and Mindy, or the Triangle Channel. All produced by Gary Marshall. Remember to always exercise firearm safety, like our friends from Over the Edge. Let me tell you something, Matt Dillon. Somebody heckles you, you go right back at them. You couldn't hit an elephant if it came up and kissed you. Why? Were you gonna kiss me? Booyah! Oh, oh. Shut up! And then Corey wants to shoot. I haven't shot yet. You already got to shoot Carl. But then Carl shoots the can. Is it, you didn't even have to shoot it. He could have just cock blocked it over. Like, he can, you can do a lot better. Well, that was a lot of fun, guys, shooting garbage. Let's put our heads together and find out how did Claude get busted by Doberman? Well, I heard Tipper got busted. It was Tip who ratted out Claude to Doberman. How come Doberman knew you sold the hash? How do I know, You're man? You're lying! Who would have thought you'd get ratted out by a guy named Tip? You told Doberman who you sold that hash to, I, didn't you? I scream. I'm gonna blow you away, Tip. And the mute boy, who communicates by fireworks, completes the illusion. Hey, man, put the gun away. Then Tip's mom loses it. Like, she doesn't know her kid's a dealer. It's a tiny town. Oh my God, what are you doing? So they throw Tip in the water. Grow no! fence, turkey. No! I'll see you in jail. You don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> You're dirty, waifish young children. <laughs> you belong in dirty Italy town of New Granada. I want to speak to the manager. <laughs> so Tip's all wet and the kids decide to scramble out of the complex. But before that, they're going to fill up a garbage bucket full of booze. All right, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. She's so big that bucket looks like a NyQuil cup to her. <laughs> hey, we get the whiskey. Now you're trying to oh, come on. In what can only be described in cinema history as gross, 
Corey runs up and kisses Carl. So he can taste Mark. Bye-bye. With his fresh new case of blue balls and back acne, Carl decides to walk on home. Why back acne? I don't know, just because he's gross. <laughs> Jerry Cole doesn't doing? know anything. He doesn't know a damn thing. He, he, Carl, he's an idiot. Where have you been? So he goes home where his, where his parents are drinking. Big shock. Where Carl gets the news he's no longer allowed to hang out with Richie and Claude. We don't want you to see your friend Richie White for a while. Or Claude Zachary either. Now the teen centers are going to be closed for a while. Carl's dad smacks Carl in the head. Kapow! I said don't I said, leave! Off Best scene in the movie. Second best. I forgot those other kids kicked his ass. Yeah, that was awesome. So he goes up to his room, but this time he's just going to sit there and sulk. And just jam out to the sweet tone of his concussion-induced tinnitus. So Tip's mom was not talking out of her ass when she said... I'll see you in jail! For getting her child wet. I guess because his hair takes so long to dry, a little fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much they hate hydration in New Granada. Tip, tell you any other names. Principal's like, anyone? Just point them out, Miss Tip. Miss Tip. Miss Tip. Mom, Mama Tip? <laughs> Ma Tip. So Carl and Richie try to make a break for it on their bikes. Come on. The cops are already on their way. So they run back to Little Shittily, where Richie lives. And weird, oh, Richie's bike beat him there. Movies are bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't real. They decide to take Richie's mom's Jeep. Because that's inconspicuous, right? A big bright orange Jeep in a prairie town with no buildings and one road in what begins a very lazy car chase. And fuck up till the end, Richie flips the Jeep, runs away, Doberman chases him down. I order you to stop! And Richie thinks, hey, maybe I'll point this gun at a cop, what could happen, right? head explodes like all oh, the visual effects must have taken months to put together it was so visceral and raw it, it's like it was so realistic it didn't happen like that i don't know if he got shot or someone tapped him on his shoulder because this is his death scene i, I, I get that when someone someone there huh someone there someone there hello so carl decides to call everybody's favorite mute johnny who, of course, is watching the Triangle Channel. Johnny, is that you? Delayed speech can be a sign of intelligence, but uh, <laughs> not in this case. Do one tap for yes, two for no. Tap, tap, top, teep, toop. <laughs> huh? Tap, tap, top, top, teep, teep, toop, toop, toop. <laughs> Did you hear anything about Richie? Johnny just holds up a doornail. So it's time for Carl to go on the lam. He hides out. Where? The construction site. But Corey shows up and not empty handed. She brings extra cheap trick tapes and one dirty sleeping bag. Of course, Carl keeps blubbering on about how his best friend just got murdered. Boo hoo. Getting bored with Carl because the attention's not on her. Corey decides to share her awful, awful dream. You know, someday I'm gonna be a gypsy. You know, a truck driver. Carl's like, actually, this sleeping bag's just for one zip. You know, my uncle says I can be a truck driver anytime I want. Yeah, and I think social services are probably looking to that uncle of yours, Corey. You know, one day I wanna be a lot lizard, traveling to different truck stops, giving squeezers for taquitos. Mm. 
On his way home, Carl comes across Mark riding his dirt bike. And to show that he's learned his lesson about the dangers of firearms, Carl shoots him in the chest. And this endears Mark to him. Hey, I think you're all right, man. I like your moxie, kid. Most people never shoot me in the chest. Things are pretty tense at Carl's house. We find out that his dad has basically given up on him. Well, he's run away then, that's it. He picks up the extension of his house and does his stupid martyr routine again. I bet you wish I got shot too, huh? I bet you wish I got shot too, huh? No. No, no, no. Stay right, Sandy, you keep him there. That's when his parents attempt to break the Carl calling record. Carl? Carl! 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 So they call an emergency PTA meeting at the school. You're to take these home to your parents to let them know about a special emergency meeting to discuss the problems about you people. So all the parents are in the cafetorium, and of course Jerry Cole is there. As a matter of fact, this turnout is really pathetic. So all the Hellions have gathered at the rec center. How you doing, soldier? We should go down there and tell them all to go to hell. Yeah. Let's go down and give those grown-ups what for? What do you say, gang? Are you with me? Oh, Jesus Christ. So all the little prepubescents are on the move. He just will not get off of her. God, it's like Clint Eastwood and Clyde. Yeah, apparently Carl has some special forces training we're unaware of. In the 70s, padlocks were made out of meringue, by the way. And he locks the exits with bike locks. Corey managed to lock one of the exits in the three seconds Carl took his hand off of her. And we do. But nobody's gonna pay 60, 80, 100,000 dollars to live in a decorator colored slum. Has anyone ever sat down and talked to these kids? Anybody? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, what's going on? We don't care. The problem no. is, my dear. Doberman sees Claude flipping him off, and the jig is up. You stinking pig! That globe's actual size, by the way, it's a one to one scale. I mean, this chick is big. You stinking pig! <laughs> I swear to God, those kids learned how to fuck up that library from that film strip they had to watch. Estimates for destruction to school facilities alone is over $100 million per year. One kid's just reading, too. He's just walking through. This cannot be understated. These kids fuck this school up. <laughs> there was less property damage in the final scene of the Avengers. Then the rec center lady decides to get Johnny to sell out his friends. Johnny! Did you get me that phone in there? And the cops are on the way. Hooray for narcs! And apparently there's a missing scene where Corey is mauled by a badger or something. Carl takes off on foot, and he gets about a block before Doberman picks him up, throws him in the back. What, you can't outrun a Carl? Carl, Carl? Carl? And just when you think the jig is up for Carl, Mark steps in and shoots the lights out of Doberman's car. Causing them to crash into the rec center. 
Psycho narcissistic cold blooded Carl leaves Doberman's lifeless body to burn as he unlocks himself. Just letting that Doberman go up like a brisket. Like, and he's got no moisture in his body because he just drank water, so he's like a tinderbox. You could do a lot better. And as you guessed it, Carl is now off to the hill with seven other grubby, dirty kids who clearly didn't get a shower yet. This was the quickest court case. These kids are already gone. He's wearing the same clothes. It's like three hours after. It's 9 a.m. And these kids are already been con tried, convicted. They're on a bus to the hill. Dwayne, what do you give this movie? Well, John, I'll have to give this one seven combs in the back pocket. And I give this uh, eight Richie flags. From Bueller and Goad, we'll see you next time. You could do a lot better.